uh, at that point in time was a, a, a news anchor for the CBS affiliate here in Las Vegas. Channel 8. Yes, and uh, he had extensive correspondence with uh, Los Alamos as well as Kirk Meyer, which was one of the subcontractors that Bob worked for. And uh, they all denied. Uh, Kirk Meyer did say he was issued a Z number, which was a number uh, required to be an employee and to get a paycheck. Uh, but uh, none of them had said that they retained records that far back. And at this point in time, it was only, you know, five or six years earlier. It wasn't, you know, ten years like it is now. And um, that they didn't retain any records at all. And George gave them numerous chances or he said, are you sure you have no record of Bob Lazar. He asked Kirk Meyer, are you sure you have no record of Bob Lazar? Mm -hmm. They denied, denied, denied. And then uh, that's when Bob came up with the Los Alamos phone book with his name and uh, station number in there. And then also he had a copy of the Los Alamos newspaper from 1982. And how did they react to that? <laughs> well, well there, we're also talking about two people. When I was initially hired on, I was hired on uh, via a headhunter, essentially, for Los Alamos. Sure. And I worked... Um, like I said, the uh, initial time you work for anyone uh, in a secure job, you have that uh, time before your clearance goes through, and that's when I worked for Kirk Meyer, uh, and then later became hired on directly uh, at Los Alamos. However, both people, uh, you know, either <laughs> quote unquote lost their records uh, or just flatly denied uh, the existence. Uh, of me even working there. Well, what pushed you to go public? What pushed me to go public essentially was fear. Um, fear of what? Fear of death? Fear of prosecution? Fear of Well, just fear in general. I, I, I imagine you can add them all together, and that was essentially what I was feeling at the time. Uh, you know, at that time, I had nothing other than what I had said to anybody, for the most part, if I suddenly disappeared off the face of the earth... Uh, nobody would have noticed. Well, n not only would nobody would have noticed, I certainly have friends and family that would well, miss yes. me, but no one would have known exactly what happened. And People disappear all the time. Right. Well, especially in Las Vegas. So I at least <laughs> oh, wanted right. to get what was going on out in the open. And... Uh, I believe it worked very well. It was essentially a pushback uh, against all the force that was leaning on me, uh, where if I, I thought if I just went on in a subdued fashion on television and maybe just said a little bit mm. um, and just kind of gave a little shove back, they would lay off. And uh, it, you know, it was perhaps it was a big gamble, but it worked exactly the way I wanted it to. Also, Art, uh, at, at this point when he was trying to show those around him what was going on is when he took uh, people like me and his wife and uh, John Lear out to the uh, BLM land outside of Area 51, and we actually saw one of the discs tested in the sky. Now, Bob did this after he, after he told us the story. After he was in trouble and in fear for his life, he told those around him the story, and obviously we were a little apprehensive when a friend said, you know, we thought he was just working in, in, you know, some project for the government. None of us really cared what he was doing. And, uh, you know, uh, so he wanted to prove that, uh, not that we thought he was lying, but it's still an, an outrageous story to tell your wife and friends and say, oh, by the way, I'm working on flying saucers. Sure, and John has told me the story of, right, of right. the trip up to Area 51, and there is video to support your claim as well. Right, right. Plenty of video. Now... They didn't let you go, though, because in 1990, and a lot of people use this, Bob, to try to discredit you, uh, you had to plead guilty to a pandering charge related to the apparent operation of an illegal brothel in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, a pandering charge, that's very serious. That's... Actually, I got to pick the charge. Oh, you got to pick it? <laughs> yeah, I got to pick did, the did charge from three of them. Uh, now, my understanding uh, is a little vague, but I think all you did was some computer work, isn't that well, right? Well, what I literally did, we have again, we have to you know backtrack to years ago after I left Los Alamos and opened up um, opened up uh, one hour photo business for my wife uh, in Los Alamos. We had decided uh, to move, and um, we began because of our contract with Los Alamos began to uh, 
uh, amass quite a bit of money. We were looking for a business to buy into. Uh, one of the things we invested in was one of the legal brothels uh, in northern Nevada. <laughs> a very oh, weird... in northern Nevada? No kidding. Right. Well, this was years ago. Yeah, people need to know, uh, here in my county of Nye, we have legal brothels, and uh, near Reno, they have legal brothels as well. Right, so... which is up where this was. Okay. And uh, it was uh, just... Another business, business, just an investment opportunity, um, and uh, you know we had uh, made money off of it and and later got rid of it. However, uh, you know, an amazing coincidence. Uh, after all this had ha- not after all this had happened, after I left the lab and uh, we decided to move to Nevada, uh, which is essentially what brought me to Las Vegas. Here, I had businesses in. Southern California, in northern Nevada, and in New Mexico, and I needed a central hub, and that's the only reason I moved out to Las Vegas. Sure. Um, we uh, so essentially you you knew the brothel business at that point. Well, yeah, to some extent, and uh, even though we were out of it after um, after I had left S4 and uh, began to look for uh, some other source of income, I ran into one of the old uh, managers of the place up north. Right. And she said she had a place running down here that wasn't running illegally, but she'd wondered if I could install a computer system like we had up there to make her business run smoother. And I said, there's no problem. It'll take me a while to write the program, and I can set the computers up for you and so, and so on and so forth. They also wanted a security camera outside to make sure a guy wasn't coming to the door with a gun or a knife. So sure. I essentially installed all that stuff and, and left, and that was... Uh, you know that was the end of it. However, uh, only it wasn't the end of it. No, it wasn't the end of it, and uh, certainly it was pretty. Um, it, it's <laughs> actually Art. What happened after that is, as you well know, living here in Southern Nevada, that um, when George Knapp did his special UFOs: The Best Evidence in November of '89, it George won uh, uh, won an Emmy for it, and it was one of the yes. highest rated shows in the history of Southern oh, yes. Nevada. So when it came for Sweeps Week the next spring, George said it would be a great idea to have Bob Lazar on. So the you know Bob had a giant following, and uh, say what has Bob Lazar went up uh, been up to? So Bob goes on television, not knowing that installing all of this equipment for for a brothel was illegal. And on television, George says, "What have you been up to, Bob?" And Bob says, "Oh, I installed some security systems and computers and things for a local brothel." And then the. He was to say the police were listening that day. <laughs> Apparently so. All right, gentlemen, hold on. We've only got one more hour to go, and it sounds like the coffee's working. This is Coast to Coast.